one gentleman talk about the earthquake in Tokyo. It was about, you know, 40, 50 years ago. The earthquake destroyed his house. Everything was gone, but there is a tea caddy. And still, there is a good quality of the tea. He drank the tea, he was so satisfied. It's always in my mind. Very airtight tea caddy makes the lid going down by itself. If the lid gradually goes down by itself, people can feel oh, this is very good quality. So if you have a good feeling when you open the tea caddy, I think you want to keep your precious things in it. To be a full craftsman takes about 10 years because we have to learn every step. I noticed this is my grandfather's 50 years. He used this from this size for 50 years, and then it becomes like this. When I use this, I can go back to my original point. Because when I was a children, I always spent the time with my grandfather. I can feel him in my behind. In my workshop, there is no radio, no music. We have to focus on the sound as well when we are making. Because if it's not good sound, we can tell this is not a good way of making. ニホンで一軒しかないのでなかなか知ってもらうのも大変。職人っていうたらもう作るばっかり、販売セールスっていうのを両方兼ねなくてはいけないのでこの仕事は難しい。One US lady just bought our tea caddy. I asked her, what are you going to use it for? She said, I'm going to use it in the kitchen. If she bought just for the souvenir for someone, I feel nothing. Then I realized, oh, our tea caddy can go into the foreign culture. カエロはあの世界へうちのチャルツを売っていきたいって言ったんですけれど、どうかな、難しいんじゃないかなと思ってましたですけれどね。I try to make this cafe as a, like a lounge for the people to spend the time with Kaikado. This tea caddy for me is like a very cool things. 
That's why I want to share these things to the world. I want the people to know about it. So, to know about this caddy, I want to do anything. Our main goal is to continue to make a tea container for the next 100 years. A lot of chefs, they focus on the traditional cuisine but no one make the, some street food and make it more luxury or fine dining. I love street food. Tourists want to come to Bangkok because of the street food. We have many, many street food. I want to, to make it better and combine with my idea and uh, try to present like luxury style or fine dining style. And some street food is like going to die or fade away, so I try to wake them up. It's like the mummy in the box. I want the Thai people or the local people try to open their heart and their mind to eat the Thai food in another way. Here is like something creative and at the same time you got a good presentation, good service and good food. You will see the cook come out to present our food by yourself. It's like you come to a tiny house, it's relaxed. And because we still Thai, I want to open the Sawan restaurant, it's like family restaurant, something like that. It's a little bit hard because I am no one and we didn't got any like prize or any award. The thing that the most challenge is the flavor of the thing that I want to present to the, the people. I just want to make the guests happy when they taste my food. My dad said, okay, you have to pick this and that and grab this and that and mix by yourself. My dad and my auntie, they inspire me a lot, a lot from the cooking. So they are like my idol, you know. The other chef cannot cook like them. Their food is like, wow. It's like magic in your mouth all the time. My dad and my aunt taught me pay attention to the detail of each food. They said the flavor and the detail of each like ingredients should become first. And then after you can focus on the thing that you want to present to another person. 
มีมีต้องมีต้องมีใบไม่ก็นักขายอย่างนี้แหละเขาก็รับกินพี่ต่อนี่ฟาร์มเป็นออร์แกนิกฟาร์มเขาไม่ใช้แอนิคอมิคอลสำหรับสัตว์หรือสัตว์ที่เกิดขึ้นในพื้นที่นั้นเพราะฉะนั้นเราสนใจที่จะนำสินค้าของเขาไปขายที่สวรรค์ร้านอาหารสำหรับฉันนี่เป็นสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นในพื้นที่ที่เขาไม่ได้เกิดขึ้นแต่ฉันอยากให้เขาเกิดขึ้นแบบฉันอยากนี่และนั่นโอเคและนี่ We have to use for the next project, so we have to plan before we create the ditch. I think the part that I enjoy most is the way that I present the local food, but I want to present it on my way and try to adapt or make it better and try to make them like luxury style. It's like you bring them from the street. And try to put the crowd, take them shower, and get a new clothes for them, something like that. It's home to all the bars and cafes and restaurants and creative businesses, and gives the Sydney experience beyond its cliched water views. This area used to be referred to as Little Hollywood because it had the Paramount Pictures Studio warehouse, the headquarters, and also 20th Century Fox. Without being rebellious, we really wanted to break the hotel corporate mold. Cookie cutter hotel white cotton sheets have been replaced with French linen, which are different in each room. Guests can leave their keys and change in a vid posh by an Australian designer, Henry Wilson. And ceramics in rooms are all designed by the Commons, which is a, a local ceramicist. The rooms do feel like a Surrey Hills Terrace, which was the idea that you would go to sleep in a room and you'd wake up and you know where you are. The directors and the owners have taken their time to curate it in a way that is very true to this neighbourhood. I imagine it must have been very tempting to you know, develop it residentially or put businesses in here which had the money to buy up the space but may not have been true to the ethos and the vision that they initially had. And I think over the past five or six years, it's come to shape in a really beautiful and organic way. It really encourages people to make friends. Often you'll see two parties sitting next to one another and by the end of their meal they're having a chat.
I've seen countless films here. I noticed the design first and foremost, and I just thought, gosh, they've done a great job of bringing it back to the era that it was originally built in. We love to see people spending time in the bar before and after screening, talking about what they've just seen. I remember a couple of seasons ago we had a gardening film on at the same time as a documentary about young skaters, so the kind of crossover between those two audiences is just so unique. The inspiration was from Grand Central Station terminals where locals and tourists would congregate and we hope that the building is who created an iconic place for this to occur in Surrey Hills and that was a driving part of opening a hotel in Surrey Hills. When I first moved out of home, my first house was in Surrey Hills. It was a really broken down terrace and there was about five people that all lived together. It was a very special time because I worked in fashion at the time. My boyfriend was in music, there was an art director. And so it was just this real melting hot pot of emerging young talent and creative thinkers. I think the hotel in this area, for me, especially feels like it's coming back to that feeling which was exciting and thriving. What's very interesting about these four bottles is that uh, we had noticed the change in the champagne bottle shape. This is Krug from 1975, and today this is what the bottle looks like. So you can really see it's quite a change in style. So a particular house would have a champagne bottle designed a particular way, and over the years they would have changed it. That's interesting to collect. Whenever I enter my cellar, there's always a great sense of comfort and joy, but also a little bit of stress because I know how messy my cellar is and I, I know I have to tidy it up. And I suppose my prize bottle would be um, Dom Perignon 1947. And my last bottle of the Bollinger 1945. I have in excess of at least 3,000 bottles. I haven't done a full count, uh, but there's definitely more than enough to enjoy with friends and family. You know when you have a favourite champagne, there's always something linked to sentimental. So for me, it would be something that my father liked, or something, a bottle that I shared with my father. My passion for champagne is definitely started from my father, who was a wine collector. And the very fond memory I have of him was two of us would have uh, oyster omelette together with a glass of champagne. I opened his cellar, he had some old bottles, and I tried it because I thought maybe it was already over the hill. But I was surprised at how beautifully they drank. And I was very attracted to the brioche, uh, the nutty aromas that sort of really started me taking a particular interest uh, in Champagne. And I was very fortunate because most of my parents were very supportive of my interest to go to Shatek Hotel School at that time. Hotel school kind of fueled the interest in wine beverage and wine knowledge.
Nicola is very into education. She's supporting this, uh, this challenge as a judge uh, because uh, it's all about sharing knowledge, providing with technical information that the sommeliers cannot especially find in the books, you know. Champagne is a living thing and the trick is to know when to serve the wine. The best way to enjoy a special bottle is always with good friends. We're having a group of old friends. Two of my good Shatek buddies. We're going to have a 1969 Comte de Champagne and the 1979 Bollinger. I like old champagne because, you know, it developed certain character and usually it will evolve and there is a bit of a honey, a bit of sweetness. People don't realise that champagne can age. It can surprise you. Sometimes you can open a bottle that you think is past its best and actually it gives a lot of joy. You never know, each bottle is, is different. Each bottle will never be the same.